So all right, so let, let the madness begin. I'm Tom Greco, the G2 of the Training and Doctrine Command, and on behalf of Training and Doctrine Command, I'd like to say thank you to the Army Cyber Institute in West Point for sponsoring this edition of Mad Scientists as we look at cyber and cyber's impacts on the Army going out all the way to 2050. Um, it's appropriate that we be here as we do this. You know, West Point has a fantastic history. When we, needed an or when we needed an institution that would help us engineer the future of America, we established West Point. If 15 years ago, when terrorism struck us in the homeland, uh, we established the Terrorism Institute here at West Point to guide us. And now we have the Cyber Institute here at West Point. Um, not only is it an important element for the academy, but it's also important to the Army overall. And one of the things we're really encouraged about is the partnership with TRADOC in training ROTC cadets and mentoring ROTC cadets who aspire to be cyber soldiers as well. A little bit about TRADOC. As the name might indicate, Training and Doctrine Command. We train uh, about a half a million Soldiers, sailors, airmen, marine, coast guardsmen, and army civilians, half a million every year. Um, we, we do doctrine, training and doctrine command. You'd kind of expect that. We also recruit the army, 10,000, over 10,000 new hires every month, over 130,000 new soldiers every year. When you think about that, that's larger than a lot of armies in NATO. Um, we recruit the Army, we train the Army, we write the Army's doctrine. We're responsible for the Army's future. We design the future Army and its equipment and its capabilities, and we also build them. So if you think about where we are in time and think in time, the current Chief of Staff of the Army and current TRADOC Commander were both commissioned in 1980. So if you do the math, so 2051, the future chief of staff of the Army, she may very well be on the plane here at West Point right now. And she may actually be tuned in to this mad scientist. Or she could be at ROTC or at a civilian university going through OCS. But the future chief of staff, unless we adopt a lateral entry into the service, the future chief of staff is somewhere in the, in, the, in, the, in the pipeline right now and will be a product of TRADOC. And anyone who's in an Army uniform and in this room right now is a product of TRADOC. Uh, but let's get back to thinking in time. I'm going to show you a short video, the first true test of our cyber expertise, which is going to take a retrospective look back to 1980 and then project out to 2050. And the challenge that we have is not so much where, what the technologies will be, but when those technologies will be realized, and then when can we take those technologies and apply them to the military problem set. So with that, Nope. Thank you. Is there no sound?
What do you consider the greatest threat the United States of America faces? Well, I would put Russia right now from a military perspective as the number one threat. I would also add uh, China, North Korea, uh, and ISIS, uh, along with Iran. Just as we are looking forward, so are potential adversaries. Russia is aggressively exploring remote combat operations. Here is a Russian simulation of their future combat unmanned ground vehicles operating in a contested urban environment. So it doesn't end well for the Army's major combat systems. So why mad scientists? First off, the term mad scientist is a bit tongue-in-cheek. When you think about it, who doesn't want to be a mad scientist? Short of the Alf uh, Albert Einstein hair. You want to be on the edge. It, it, it connotes limitless, limitless thinking. What we are doing with our mad scientist program is it is the linkage between academia, industry, and Army practitioners. It's that partnership, the true strength of the nation. How do we bring the intellectual capacity of the nation to bear on the Army's next problem? So as TRADOC and TRADOC's G2, my responsibility is to identify what are the future operational environment that the Army is going to face in the future? What are the conditions we're going to have to deal with. That's a big task. So for that future chief of staff of the Army who's walking around West Point right now, if we don't get the operational environment right, the start point, then they won't have the right Army in 2050. And the kinds of things we saw in that excerpt from a Russian simulation will come true. So that's why mad scientists. It's continuous dialogue. We have calls for papers, we have a partnership with Small Wars Journal, the Army Press, and prestigious academic institutions. In this case, in this instance, we're very privileged to be partnered with the Military Academy and the Cyber Institute here. So with that, I'd like to turn over the microphone to the Superintendent, Lieutenant General Caslin. 